All right, so I mentioned previously, uh, while I was introducing my components, that the case would require some assembly. So let me give you a real quick look at uh, what I mean before I cut to a time lapse. So let's take a look. All right, so here we have our uh, box for the Morpheus. And with a quick opening here, it is very easy to quickly realize that we have a bunch of individual panels that I'm gonna have to lay out here. I don't even know what's in these boxes here. But some corner piece of some sort. Yeah. Yep. So, definitely some assembly required. So, let me drop up a time lapse and I'll get on that. All right, I'm going to get some voiceover in while I do the time lapse so I can try and highlight exactly what I'm doing. At this point, I'm just taking everything out of the box and spreading it out so I can see what all I got to work with. This blue assembly mat that was included has some instructions on it, but they're not real good. It's pretty much take everything out and put it together. This weird little bracket confused me for a while. Since not only do you have to assemble this case, but it's actually modular and can be done in two configurations, there are about 9,000 screws involved in putting it together. kidding when I said there was a lot of screws involved here. This is when I figured out that odd bracket was the support for the motherboard tray. That really helped with the rest of assembly. The outsides of the case come in two panels that clamshell together. Unfortunately, as the case is modular, that means you have to find all the screws involved to take them out, extend them all to the same length, and then screw them all back together. As I obviously haven't completely caught on to yet at this point. This separator panel isn't 100% necessary even in full tower mode, but at the time I didn't know if it was structural or not, so I installed it anyway. Also, since the front radiator is going to exhaust through the front of the case, I took the screen out there. So I finally got the outsides all assembled at the same length. Now I just got to get all the tabs configured correctly. Now I'm breaking out one of the radiators for my cooling loop so I can do some test measurements. My initial idea that either the radiator or the fans would go on the inside of that bracket was incorrect. They both have to go on the back side. That leaves a space so the front emblem doesn't get jammed in anything. Now I'm going to check the positioning of the motherboard standoffs and install any of them that I needed to. to make sure they do in fact all screw down correctly. Right about here I noticed that the rear bracket that's supposed to hold one 80 millimeter fan can possibly hold two with some inventive modifications. And now I'm doing a quick test mount of the top radiator so I can check the runs for hoses and see how it's all gonna fit. All right, so it's a new day. Uh, you saw where I stopped on the time lapse there. I got to the point where I uh, was test fitting where the radiators will go for the liquid cooling loop and decided that I needed to stop and do some other stuff. So 
first thing, which I probably won't bother to show because it's very boring, is I need to flush the radiators because they're uh, just out of the box. You technically shouldn't need to, but just in case there's any like aluminum shavings or any other stuff from the manufacturing process left in the, uh, in the system there, I'm just gonna run some hot water through it. So I'm just gonna get a little, some little piece of tube and the fittings that go on it and the pump that comes in the kit. Uh, and uh, short jumper the power supply and just run some basically hot water through the radiator into um, into a bucket so that it dumps any shavings into the bottom. So the other thing I'm doing is where with, with these points right here is where you're normally supposed to mount the 80 millimeter fan on the inside of the case. I noticed that if you offset it a little bit, you can actually get two in here. And more airflow is always better. So if I offset these a little bit and use the holes in the catacomb here, and I'm going to have to drill a hole there, and I think I'm going to have to drill a hole about right there. Uh, but that will give me two 80 millimeter fans on the intake, along with the two... 120s that will come in here, which will blow air in this way and in this way. Then I will have the front mounted radiator, which will blow air out the front, and the top mounted radiator, which will blow air out the top. So I am going to get to flushing the radiator, and I will get back to the time lapse when I get around to drilling the holes in the case and then getting back to test fitting all my parts. So as promised, here I am drilling the holes for the 80 millimeter fans on the back. Drilling the way I was taught to with anything, you do a small punch, then you do a small hole with the uh, tiny bit, and then you come back through with a bigger bit to drill it out to the size that you need. a vacuum to clean up these shavings and I thought I had one but I don't so I didn't. So here I'm using a cordless impact wrench to actually I'll run the screws into the plastic for the fans to ream them out before I mount them so that it's easier to get the screw in them while I'm holding it in place. So here I'm doing the pre-ream on the second 80 millimeter fan and getting ready to test fit it. And now because my holes didn't line up exactly like I thought they would, I used zip ties. Alright, I'm going to drop the motherboard in place here so I can check the location of the fan headers. Same as the 80 mils, I'm doing a pre-ream on the 125s and installing them in the bottom so that they pull air up. Repeat the process with the second fan. So quick update where we're at. I've got the two 80 mil fans installed. Uh, once I got the holes drilled there and screwed in, I did have an issue where some of the other holes that I had been using did not line up anymore. So I had to use some zip ties. So it totally would not be something I'm doing if zip ties weren't involved somewhere or duct tape, one or the other. Anyway, so we also have the bottom mounted 120 mil fans installed. And at the moment, I'm thinking I'm going to put the reservoir for the liquid cooling system right here, which I'm not even sure if you can see that. But uh, so I've got to drill two holes in here, at least two, because these are threaded on the bottom. 
so I can mount that to the bottom of the case so it doesn't uh, shake around and fall over. Anyway, that's what I'm off to do. So here I'm going to turn the case over and make some guesstimations on where the screw holes go for the reservoir. I don't have an actual punch marker, so I had to use a small screwdriver and a hammer. Same drilling method as before, use a small bit on the original punch marks and then go back with a larger bit and drill to size. So I'm doing my best with a damp paper towel to clean up as much of the shavings as possible. Now that the first hole is drilled, I can test thread it and use that to guesstimate where the second hole needs to be drilled. I was going to start fitting the top radiator, so I pulled it out and started mounting the fans to it. Same thing with the front mount radiator. Now I'm going to use some short lengths of tubing from where I did the flush of the radiators to guess how long the runs are going to be. I had to relocate the front panel cabling here because it was kind of getting in the way. I called in my lovely assistant to help hold the board in place so I could measure the tubing that will run from the radiator to the CPU block. One of the advantages of using soft tubing for this kit is you can cut it with a box cutter and you don't need a weird pipe cutter or hacksaw or anything like you do with the hard tubing. Just be sure to make sure the cut is as clean and even as possible so it seats correctly on the barbs. So when getting ready to fill your radiators, remember you need two things, distilled water and biocide of some sort. After all, you don't want weird things growing in your liquid cooling loop. So here I'm raising the reservoir so it's the highest point in the system. Then I'll use some quick bumps from the power supply to get the pump to assist with bleeding the system. I did have an air bubble get trapped at the CPU block. When I opened the barb to bleed it, this happened. Other than that minor mishap, it all went as expected. Then I rocked the system around to try and make sure there weren't any more air bubbles caught in the radiators. Alright, so we're back here on me again. I have done a few things today. I have uh, broken out both of the radiators, uh, the pump and the water block for the liquid cooling kit and I have uh, run some warm water with uh, the stuff from this Primo Chill kit that I bought. Uh, Primo Chill Sysprep. So that is supposed to clean and uh, prep the radiators. I don't know what it does to prep them, I guess coats them in something. Actually that took a while because it says it's supposed to run, actually it says it's supposed to run for like 12 hours, uh, 12 to 24 hours. Um, I ain't got that kind of time. I let it run for about two. And called it good. Um, so what I'm getting ready to do now 
is let it run for a leak test make sure I got no uh, leaks overnight and that should uh, be about all I'm gonna manage to get in for today so let me get to that all right so it's another day I'm back um, over here as you might have been able to tell from the uh, last video I've got the case pretty much assembled I've got the liquid cooling loop mounted the hoses run the radiators filled and I've leak tested it no leaks now that I've gotten this far I have to do what is possibly the scariest thing in this whole situation I've got to mount the liquid cooling or the reservoir at least to the screw holes that I made for it in the bottom of the case and then I have to lay the whole thing on its side so that I can uh, mount the motherboard and hope nothing leaks when I turn it sideways so wish me luck So the first thing I have to do at this part is get the radiator in place and get the screw into the feet through the bottom of the case. Since I am getting ready to mount the motherboard and the CPU block for the liquid cooler, first thing I need to do is take the air cooler off and then clean up the thermal paste. I'm going to seat the RAM before I put the motherboard in. And checking the manual to make sure that I'm going to use the right plate and offset screws for the AM4 chipset. Here I saw an air bubble in the loop and knew that the reservoir was leaking. It didn't lose much, but I did have to reseat the cap and make sure that it was threaded on a little tighter. Putting in the motherboard screws. Here I am routing the power cables for the fans to the motherboard headers. top radiator fans weren't initially going to fit where I wanted them to go. Fortunately there was another fan header on the back of the motherboard so I rerouted to that one. As always, mind the cable management. I'm remembering to tuck the cable so that they fit under the motherboard tray. Here I'm applying thermal paste to the processor. This is the paste that came with the liquid cooling kit. I've got some more high-end cryonaut thermal paste to use when I get the processor that I want in here. Here I'm getting ready to install my M.2 SSDs. I'm installing the Gen 3 boot disk in slot 3. Slot 3 should be the one attached to the chipset, so the Gen 3 disk shouldn't have a problem with bandwidth. The two Gen 4 disks will use the two sockets directly attached to the CPU. Okay, quick mid-build update. If we take a quick look here, there we go. So I've got the uh, power cables for the fans run through the little pass-throughs there uh, and mounted to the board. I had to pull uh, these cables back out because for the front panel because I was an idiot and forgot that the board in this case uh, mounts upside down to what a normal case does. So instead of running them to the bottom, I needed to run them through the top. Let me turn this back around. All right, so I've got my fans here all wired up. I've got my three solid states installed. I got my RAM installed. The loop is in here. Uh, it did lose a little bit of fluid. The first time I turned it over, I had to uh, reseal the cap on the reservoir, but a uh, simple top it off and uh, bleed the air bubbles out uh, should fix that. So now I've just got to run the front panel adapters or the front panel cables, I mean, uh, to the correct ports, install the power supply and the video card. And at that point, I should be good to 
uh, start installing windows. Yay! So here I'm getting out all the cables I'm going to need for the power supply. Now I'm feeding through and connecting the front panel headers to the motherboard. I did find that annoyingly, although the case has two Type-C ports on the front panel, the motherboard only has one port for the cable. So that's going to leave me stuck with only one active Type-C port on the front panel. When in doubt, always RTFM. Right here I'm bundling up the remainder of the front panel cables in the cable management slots. Here I'm mounting the power supply in place. Here I'm routing the main 24 pin cable and connecting it to the motherboard. Also I'm routing and connecting the power cables for the board auxiliary power. All right. Quick mid-assembly update here. I uh, just wanted to show you, I have unboxed my Sapphire Pulse RX 5700 with its nice little fans there. But what I actually wanted to point it out was these little adapters that I got. So these come in two packs, so they go in each direction, but one part of it is the plug that goes into the card, and then the other part is a redirect. So I can bring my power cables this way and plug straight in and not have to do that big 180, you know, hard bend to plug it into the card. So, cable management. So here is the video card getting installed. Also, I'm going to route and connect the video card power cables. All right, everybody. Well, it is another day and I have hit a roadblock. So obviously, let me flip around here and show you real quick. As you can see here, I've got the system pretty much all assembled. My liquid cooling is run. My fans are mounted. My video cards in. Obviously, the uh, other stuff is on the back side of the plate here. The reservoir pump and the power supply and all that other stuff. What had happened was I spent um, over the course of about two or three days, near enough five hours in the BIOS on this system, trying to get the RAM to recognize correctly. The kit of RAM I bought, that uh, Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, uh, was a 3466 kit which obviously should run at 3466 megahertz. I mean, duh, that's why they put the number on the box, right? So every time I turned the system on, recognized at 2133, the lowest standard that it uh, supports, the JDAC standard. I think it's JDAC, JDAC, JTAC, J something another. Anyway, I tried, you know, is it having two sticks instead of one? So I tried one stick. Um, I updated the BIOS, reapplied the optimized defaults, tried it in different slots, uh, tried using the XMP profile, tried looking up the numbers with the Ryzen DRAM calculator and manually entering the, the specs. Didn't work. Uh, the motherboard has a try it feature, which has some predefined timings uh, for each speed. Actually, it's got three. It has a tight timing, a medium timing, and a loose timing. So I tried the loose timings all the way from 3466 down to 3200 to 2933 to 2666 to 2400, all on the loosest timings. None of them would recognize. 2133 was it. So after about that five hours or so of messing with it, I finally gave up, logged uh, into my Amazon account and set them up for return. And then just because even though the RAM says in the item description that I ordered it from that it was designed to work with both Intel and AMD motherboards. It just doesn't seem to work. So I went to the MSI website, looked up my motherboard, 
and found the RAM compatibility list. Looked up a manufacturer that I have always had good luck with, which is G-Skill. I've always had good luck with G-Skill RAM. Went through and found a, well, I found all the ones that were 3600. Went to Amazon, started copying and pasting and searching. And to my surprise, this time around, I got lucky. I don't know how it happened. I don't normally get lucky. Stuff usually goes wrong for me. But I found a kit that was on the compatibility list, 32 gig, 2x16 kit, no RGB. Yay, I hate RGB. Those other sticks were so bright. Anyway, this kit, no RGB, 3600 megahertz on the compatibility list. And it was actually $50 cheaper than the kit that I was turning in. So, yay. Anyway, so I'm kind of stuck here until my new RAM comes in and I can finish configuring the system. So, I will get back to this little episode here, part three, I guess, uh, when I can finish configuring the system and run my benchmarks. I will also benchmark my current system, my uh, Ryzen 2200 system downstairs, and possibly even my laptop, just for some, some reference. Oh, and this system with the 3400 G CPU I have in it right now, which will eventually be an upgrade for my media PC downstairs because reasons. So I will get back to you guys later with this technical debacle. Look forward to some non computery stuff next week and like, subscribe. I'll see you around.